Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. I'm Chris and today we are going to start a new video series regarding iOS development. In this video we are going to see the basics on how to create your first iOS app using Swift. For this tutorial you will need Xcode. In case you don't have already installed it, you can download it for free from App Store. First, open Xcode and select Create a new Xcode project. Make sure that you select Single View app under iOS category and press Next. Give a name in your app and once again press Next. Then select where you would like your project to be stored. Once your project created, you can navigate to the project files from the project navigator on the left. Today, we will focus on the storyboard files where our app user interface can be created. An additional view controller should be added since we will create a dual view app. The second view can be added by just drag and drop view controller from the object library on the right bottom corner. Let's change the background color on each view in order to be more easy to distinguish them. This change can be done from the attribute inspector on the right upper corner. Now let's add some objects. First, a label on each view. Objects can be filtered from the relevant field in order to be easier to find label. Once label is shown on the list, just drag and drop from the object library to each view. Text on each label can be changed from the attribute inspector. Basic size and positioning adjustments can be done as shown. Of course, this is not the best way to adjust size and positioning on objects, but for now we'll stay with this. Once we finished with the labels, we can add another object to our app. A button will be added in order to allow us to execute some basic actions. Following the same procedure like labels, we can add the button to one of our view and adjust text sizing and positioning. Now we will set up the button in order to navigate to the second view when the button is pressed. In order to do so, just press Ctrl and drag from the button to the second view. From the menu that pop up, select Show. It's time to execute the app we just created. Simulator is enough for our case. Select the simulator you would like from the list and press Run. Once the app is loaded on the simulator and splash screen disappear, our app is loaded as expected. As you can see, the first view is loaded since it has been configured as initial view controller. When we press the button we just created, our app navigates to the second view. The problem is that our app does not provide an option to navigate back to the first view. Let's fix it. Select the first view and from the menu go to Editor Embed in Navigator Controller. As you can see, an additional view is automatically created and connected to our first view. For now, let's keep it as it is, since in some other video we will dig more to the navigation controllers. Let's run again our app to check if lack of navigation back has now been fixed. As you can see now, a navigator bar has been created on the upper side of the app and back option is now available. Till now everything seems to work fine, but we have skipped one basic step. iOS app are based on MVC model, so each view should have its own controller. The controller for our first view has been created automatically during the project creation. Probably you have not identified yet the lack of controller for the second view. But if you want to take some action, controller for each view is mandatory. In order to add the new controller to the object, just right-click in the object 
and press new file. Make sure that you have selected Cocoa Touch class and press next. Give the new view controller a name and be sure that it is subclass of UI view controller. Language for our case needs to be Swift. Select file location and press create. In order to connect view objects to the assigned view controller, go to Assistant Editor. According to the selected view on the storyboard, the relevant view controller will open. As you can see, this worked for the first view, but not so good for the second view. This is happening because we have not assigned second view controller to the second view. In order to assign view controller, select view, then go to the identity inspector and from the drop down list select the view controller you want to assign to the view. Now it's time to connect the object of each view to the relevant controller. In the assistant editor select object and while pressing control drag and drop to the view controller. In the menu that pop up with outlet selected give a name for the object and press connect. Do this for all the objects in the view. In Button's case, apart from the outlet, we can create the action as well. Following the same procedure like outlet, select action from the relevant list, assign a name and press connect. We can see an overview of uh, outlets and actions in the connection inspection area. The same procedure we should follow for each view. Since we have finished with all the connection, it's time to take advantage of the flexibility that view controllers provide to us. Let's change the text of the label on the second view during app execution. In order to do so, we will go to the view did load function which is executed after relevant view is loaded and we will assign a new text to the label. The text of the second view label was second view, but we will change it during view load through view controller to welcome to the second view controller. Let's run our app once again to check the results. exactly what we were expecting. That's all for our first video on iOS app development. I hope you enjoyed it. Many tips and tricks for iOS app development will come up on our next videos. If you like our video, please press like and subscribe to Poseidon Tech. Thank you.